Hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. In today's episode, I'm going to show you around the allotment, just you know, just so you can get a handle on what's been going on and what's about to come. So I'm going to explain what's going to be coming up in the next few episodes, and also I'm going to be explaining to you how I do the weeding around the onions. So there's a few tips on that as well. So welcome to the episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Mm. Okay, so it's got to that stage where the uh, it's time to weed the onions. Now, what I always do uh, with the onions is I always go through with the with the trowel and I pull out the uh, the weeds. Now, the weeds that I get mainly are the uh, sort of dandelions and thistles and things like that. Um, and so, what I always want to do is I find that if you hoe them up, uh, because you have this sort of tapping root, um, you know, sort of reasonably good root system on them that they don't uh, that they don't sort of hoe up too well because the you can chop the tops off and typically what happens is the uh, is the uh, basically the root starts to grow again so what I tend to do is uh, just with the trowel now what you want to do is be gentle when you do this is just sort of loosen them up and pull them out so you get the root sort of coming out with the plants now if you if you hoe them basically what you need to do is most certainly guarantee that you're going to have warm weather for a couple of days because when you hoe them up what you want is for the roots to be exposed to sort of dryness and that'll obviously kill the plant off. Now what I what I've always done as I say with the onions um, is if you imagine where you've got the onion sort of going in the roots are reasonably shallow on onions and so what you don't want to do is put your trowel in too close. I wouldn't go you know more than sort of um, about two or three inches away from the onion at the most and then just very gently so just sort of pull them up and then grab the grab the roots just 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 below where the stalks coming through on the ground and make sure that you pull the entire root out of the uh, the weed now if you do this if you if you kind of wait put your onions in um, into sort of freshly dug ground as I explained in earlier episodes and then uh, if you wait till kind of now where the the weeds are sort of, uh, you can sort of imagine the weeds are kind of that big at the moment. Now, when they get to that size, um, you know, they're big enough to pull out and the, and the roots are strong enough so you can pull the whole thing out in one go. If you leave it another couple of weeks, what you do tend to find is the roots have already gone down too far then and it's, uh, it's, it's, it gets more and more difficult to pull them out. And if you leave it, if you don't sort of wait till now, what you do find is the uh, the root will actually snap off, and uh, which leaves part of the root in, which will then grow again. So really, you've got about with the weeds, you've got a, probably about a two or three week window where the with the weeds are kind of that big, and really that's the optimum time where you can sort of get in there. They're big enough so you can pull the whole root out, and they're not too big so the root's gone all the way down and really got established. So it, it's the it's now is the best time if you've got a bit of dry weather. Uh, where well, it hasn't been raining for a few days and the ground's nice and loose and you know you can pull it out. When it's when it's been raining um, what you can find is the um, the ground can get a bit sticky and it's difficult to get the soil off the roots so when it's nice and dry like that you can see the, the root comes straight out and uh, it doesn't take any of the soil with it so now if, if your garden's nice and dry like mine I know we've been promised a bit of rain uh, tomorrow but uh, if it's nice and dry and your and your weeds are about this kind of size, now's the ideal time just to spend a few hours going around your plot and f fetching them all out. And uh, as soon as you've got them out, um, you, you, you know they're not likely to come back. So you'll just have the odd one. So if you can sort of knock them on the head now, in you know this time of the season, you'll f you'll save yourself no end of time later on because the you know basically you've fetched all the weed out 
and uh, you know they're unlikely to come back. You'll just get the odd one coming back after this, and uh, you know you can just get that get them with the hoe or just pull the individual ones out um, after that. But uh, this is you know the best time of the year to uh, pull the weeds out. So I'll just do a quick tour so you can see what's going on. Um, the the tomatoes are growing like billy at the minute, and I really do need to get these in, which is why I'm trying my damnedest to get rid of all of this. Um, out into the garden so I can um, start to plant them into the borders before they get um, sort of too pot bound but um, because of this strange weather that we've been having um, the um, some of the the gourds have got dry during the day and so the the, the kind of strain, so it's showing a little bit of stress really some of the seedling leaves have um, sort of gone a little bit yellow and that's because basically they've um, sort of dried out in the day and the tomatoes a few of them have also dried out as well so uh, which isn't which isn't really good, but um, but they are really growing it. But they're starting to get a little bit leggy, really. They're not sort of fattening out, and I think that's because they're sort of so sort of densely packed in there. Um, the ones on the end are just as sort of leggy, so I think it's uh, it's probably more the fact that I just need to get them out. But anyway, that's the um, that's the one box which obviously I need to get all planted out. But uh, I'm waiting on putting these out because of the, uh, the the chance of frost, so I don't really want to put out the gourds until really the end of this month, so I've got another week or so of them being in the greenhouse. Um, and then as soon as I've got rid of them, um, I can start to put the tomatoes out and about. Um, these are the um, the lentils, and as you can see, they're doing really well. I'm, I'm really um, impressed how these lentils have grown. They are like weeds, to be honest with you. I mean, they are growing really, really well. Um, so I want to try and get these out as well, but again, these are not um, hardy towards frost, so I'm, I'm I'm being quite careful about putting them out. So again, this time next week, I've got all the ground prepared today, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, but um, these are going to be going out next week. So I need to build a structure for the, um, the chickpeas, which are these ones on the end here. Um, I need to grow a structure for them to grow up. Uh, I'm not sure about the structure on these. I'll have a look on the uh, the seed packet again. But uh, I'll be I'll be building a structure over the next day or so. Um, I've got all of next week off um, to um, uh, you know because it's been half term. So I'll uh, I'll be doing quite a bit in the garden next week. So that'll all be in the coming videos. But these are all going to go out basically in the next week. Those are the cherry tomatoes there. Obviously they're growing really well. There's some money makers which are going to go um, outside. They're the ones for outside. They're the corns. Really, they need to go out now. But again, I'm worried about the frost. Um, there's some um, some of the Nero kale, which I need to um, sort of get out soon. I think they're just about ready. But I've got the reason that the small is I've got a couple of plants in each one, so I need to pull one of the two plants out. These are the um, parsnips which you saw in the hundredth episode. They're the ones that are left, so they will go in somewhere. And I've got some of these. These are the uh, the seeds that are yeah, chitted, and you can see they've got some second leaves on them there. But um, obviously I shan't be putting them anywhere. Um, we've had quite a few of the um, um, strawberries off. The, these are the, um, the, the you know the sort of the original. Um, oh, what are they called? The little strawberries. I'll, I'll point across the bottom of the screen. Um, but they're the uh, alpine strawberries. Um, we've had quite a few of those this week. These are the cucumbers, and the, this is the big gym pepper. Um, again, sort of, these are sort of getting a little bit dry in there. I keep giving them a bit of water, but uh, I'm always a bit wary of overwatering cucumbers when they're in the pots. But uh, they're ready to go in the borders as well. I, I, I really need to, need to uh, get them in. These are the beans I put in last week. These are shooting up. Um, I've made a bit of space at the end here. I've put some more beans outside. Um, I, there's, there's sort of another four there to go out. Um, these are sunflowers I put in last week. Um, I didn't put a video out on these, but I've basically put a few more. Um, um, some flowers in, um, some for me and some for my parents as well. So there's, uh, there's some sunflowers there, and there's some here as well. So these have basically come up. These have basically come up in the last um, sort of week or so. Just help that one along by pulling its uh, by pulling its um, seed pod off. But um, so they they've come up really quickly. These are some more lentils. Uh, we've got loads of lentils. If anybody who needs any lentils, let me know. <laughs> these are some more. Uh, Nero kale that I that, um, that I uh, potted up earlier on today. These are the ones that um, I don't really need, so I've just popped them on one side. Some more corns, a mystery tomato. These are the uh, um, this is a voluntary tomato here. Um, so uh, the the peas, ugh, I don't know. I, I just I've just got to despair really to be honest with you. 
I've, um, I've I've never had so little success with peas. Obviously, you know, you always tend to get a few on the end that kind of miss. But every every year I grow peas like this, and this is the first time in probably twenty years I've had it fail like this on me twice. But uh, still, you live and learn. But uh, those are the peas. I've I've kind of give up with them to be honest with you. But uh, anyway, that's the greenhouse. I showed you the um, the ginger last week. Um, and that's sort of, I don't want to disturb it too much, but I've, I've got some little shoots like my fingers sticking out if you didn't see that video. Now, the grapevine, good news, this is the one that got broken off. And um, it's done really well. That's, that's where the top shoot was. It was from there up to here. Here's the shoot here. Um, and I did have a comment, how did it break off? It most certainly wasn't wind. Uh, I think a bird got an ear to one with him, probably flew into it and snapped it off. But um, this shoot here... See this one here coming up is growing like bilio at the minute. So what I'm going to do, that's the same one as the one that broke off. So what I'm going to do is chop that off there, take all of that out and just leave this as the runner and let that run up because the rate that this is going, it's actually going to catch up with the others. So um, what I'm going to do is the one that broke off, which is this one, um, I'm going to chop that off just down there um, later on today or this week anyway. And I'm just going to allow that one to grow because that one's growing something like, uh, believe it or not, that's growing about four inches a day at the moment. Um, some more corns here, obviously they're sort of growing. And so obviously they're a little bit behind the first batch. But uh, So that's the greenhouse. Um, the, um, the bees have, have been absolutely loving the, uh, the, uh, the comfrey. I've actually got some more snips. Um, some, some video clips of the, uh, the bees, but they, the bees just don't leave this comfrey alone. They've, uh, they've really enjoyed uh, this comfrey. That's why I've left it there because um, I do like to see the bees on flowers and uh, so that's why I've left them there. As soon as the flowers are finished and the bees have done, I'll, I'll chop it all down and make some, uh, make some liquid uh, fertiliser with it. Um, so that's the comfrey. Um, the strawberries, um, I've been round and I've put weekler on all of the bindweed and there's still a couple of pieces which seem have seemingly have es escaped the weed killer. But um, as you can see there, to show you like that's that's some of the and that's the uh, the weed killer that you actually just brush on the leaves so i actually put it on some of the leaves and obviously it's just killed it straight off you can see this one here it's killed it right out so i was quite impressed with that but uh, obviously there's a piece there that's uh i'm not quite sure where this bindweed's from it wasn't here last year or before so it's it's uh i don't know if it's coming on uh, birds brought it in or what but uh the um, hollyhocks are going balmy at the moment. They're growing about two inches or three inches a day. They just seem to be growing and growing and growing. This is the mint. Um, we've got two tops of mint there, cat mint and spearmint. I can't tell the difference between the two at the minute, but uh, when you brush past this, actually I've got some bindweed there as well. I'm going to have to get some stuff on that as well. Just noticed that. Um, I'll put some more stuff on that. Oh, there's some here as well. But that stuff, you, you really do need to nip that in the bud because if you let that establish itself, it's a pain in the backside to get. You, you'll end up digging all this out to uh, get rid of it. But uh, anyway, the mint's doing really well and the smell is absolutely tremendous. Um, but the hollyhocks, as you can see, they're already starting to uh, form the uh, the flower buds. One there, one there. These are the white ones. I've not actually put, uh, I've actually got some seed. I've got some black and I've got some dark red um, hollyhock seeds, which I'm going to be putting in shortly. Um, so, uh, but because I'm trying to clear the greenhouse out, that's going to go on the uh, the surface when I've uh, cleared that out. Um, so that's why I haven't put any hollyhocks in because hollyhocks are biannual. So basically, you grow the plants this year, and then um, you know the, the, they'll actually flower and sort of come to fruition next year. Now these hollyhocks, even, even though I've just called them biannuals, um, these hollyhocks have been there now about six years, um, and so that you can class them as kind of a semi-hardy. Um, perennial as long as you don't get a really bad winter they will grow the next year and keep on flowering so uh, and as I say I've been really lucky with these white ones they've been there for six years and they've kept on coming um, the oregano is um, growing really well so they've really um, they've really done well from the uh, um, from the um, you know the trim that they had and I do love the smell of this every time I come past it I, I just can't help myself I have to put my hand through it and uh, have a smell and the, you, you, just just by knocking the plant as you walk past it, it it gives out such a pungent smell it's really nice reminds you of uh, sort of Spain and Italy and uh, really nice anyway some more mint and um, that's um, 
I think that's actually household mint that one there. Um, these uh, these are the herbs that um, that we grew on. Now these um, sweet basil here seem to be struggling a little bit, and I'm wondering if that's the weather um, that's caused that because um, again everything else seems to be okay, but uh, basil's not known for being hardy against frost. But uh, that seems to be really struggling. The normal basil's really starting to bush up and uh, started to form, and the the marjoram here at the front's really starting to take hold. So I'm really pleased with that. And this here is the um, of course is the thyme, the this, this small leafed um, here. So basically, if you get the this is basically me me sort of uh, pasta mix here. So we've got basil, we've got uh, marjoram, thyme, and oregano. And if you put those those four herbs together honestly it's it's uh, mouth watering and obviously we've got rosemary here um, this is the one that's been quite established for some time I do like the smell of rosemary um, so we've got we've got a smelly video today <laughs> some more mint if I just just in case I haven't got enough already there's another oregano there um, these are some strawberries I'm going to put some more of the strawberries into the uh, the bed as well because there's a there's a few sort of bald bits at the back that I'm going to um, fill out now um, these are the sunflowers. I'm going to be putting some of these out um, later on um, this weekend. Um, I'm going to start putting them around the tunnels. Um, so um, they'll be going in very shortly. And the sweet peas are going to go out as well. Um, the um, Oh, the one thing I didn't show you. That's the, um, that's the lavender that I planted um, two years ago from seed. And it's been quite pathetic to be honest with you from seed. The cuttings, I meant to mention this to you last week actually as well. Uh, the cuttings are doing really well. It's quite clear from the cuttings that they've struck. Can you see the new growth that's growing on the side here? This sort of fresher green colour. Um, if you if you look at it from, so I'll just show you on here. I'll just take the weed out of the way as well. These sort of silvery bits here, those were obviously the original cutting, you know, the, the stalk that I put in. From there on in, can you see that little side piece there? That's the the new growth. And so it's clear, and that's the new growth there. So it's clear from that new growth that they've actually established roots and they're actually growing now. So we're uh, really pleased with them. So I've got um, I've got sort of seven plants out of the eight that I've planted, so really impressed with that. And I'm sure that they will become a really nice shrub very quickly. These things out, out here um, have been growing for two years now. And uh, it's painful to watch, to be honest with you. These, I'm, I'm sure they'll be that big in a month or so's time. And within a year, they're going to be in really nice big uh, big bushes to put in the garden. So, And lavender is a fantastic plant to have in your garden for a lot of reasons. It doesn't only look beautiful, it smells beautiful. And it also is fantastic for insects and all sorts of... Uh, and it's also... Um, slugs don't like lavender as well. So if you've got slug problems, surround your garden with lavender and you can't go wrong. These chives look absolutely fantastic at the moment. See the, the flowers are just coming out and uh, the bees have been buzzing around these as well. I actually had that, that one at the back there, that pale one there, I actually had a bumblebee trying to land on that last night. And uh, this bumblebee was probably about the size of my thumb when he was trying to land on that flower. Um, for some reason, the bees don't seem to be anywhere near as, as uh, keen on this um, comfrey as the one over there, but uh, they have been around here as well. Um, the asparagus is still growing as you can see, it's uh, coming on quite quite strong. The raspberries are starting to um, show the show the buds, so I would imagine another month and we're going to have raspberries everywhere. Um, now, look at the difference with these um, with these sunflowers. These are the ones that went in last week and just within a week they've, they've, they've really shown um, a massive difference. They've grown sort of three, three inches, two inches, I'd say probably three inches. And uh, just just by putting them out, you know, they're so much bigger now than the ones I've just shown you over here. Um, so really now, it's you know, it's 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 obvious that it's the time to put them out because as soon as you put them in the ground, they're away. So uh, anyway, that's the top half. The um, potatoes are coming through slowly. Nowhere near as good as last year. I think that's again because of the weather. But um, I've got a few weeds coming through, and um, so what I need to do is hoe these up. What I'm going to do, um, which I'll explain when I get around the other side, I'm going to paint all of the wood that's round the strawberries um, and um, I'm also going to put some straw in amongst the plants before I put these cages back on, so that's why I've not weeded that bit yet. The, um, the spinach beet and the uh, perpetual spinach 
literally is on its last legs now. Um, it's, it's really trying to run to seed, even though I've kept pulling all the seed pods out. Um, as you can see, all of these sort of little seed pods forming everywhere. Um, and really, I'm, 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 I'm trying to hold back a tidal wave with this now. So really, I think within the next two or three weeks, that's, that's going to be completely finished. The, t the, uh, the two tubs last week I filled with um, some good quality topsoil mixed with um, chicken manure. And this is, this is going to be the site for the sweet potatoes. So what I'm going to do is now I've filled these up, they're completely filled to the top. What I'm going to be doing is putting like a structure on with some bamboo with some more of this pipe work at the top to hold it in the right shape. And the two sweet potatoes are going to be grown in there. And then where this all the spinach is now, um, I'm going to be planting the outside um, tomatoes along here. Crazy as, as though it may seem, so I'm going to put tomatoes next to potatoes, and if the potatoes get blight, it's going to wipe the tomatoes out. However, um, because I'm because I'm testing this new variety, what I want to do is is give it the give it the full test, if you like. So I'm going to actually plant it in the in in between the potatoes um, to see how we get on with that. So uh, these are going to be the, all all the outside tomatoes are going to go along here very shortly. So that's the top bit. Obviously the potatoes are um, sort of coming on. These ones were the last ones to go and that's why they're not quite as um, far forward as the, as, as the ones at the top there. But as I say, this time last year, these potatoes were, you know, sort of 18 inches high by now. So they are quite behind where they were. Onions are doing well. I've got quite a few missing on this side for some reason. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but um, I've got some spares to put in. But I don't think I've got enough spares for the amount of blanks that I've got because this, this part here, there's almost no onions, there's sort of one there, and there's one there, but uh, apart from that, none of the others have come up. This side were the first batch to go in, as you can see. Out of all of them, these are the ones that I've weeded today. Um, <coughs> there, there's only sort of one or two, obviously there's one there that's missing. Um, and I, I, I think in all of these rows here, I think there's actually three onions that are missing in total. So they've done really well. This second batch, for some reason, particularly here, they've not done well at all. Um, this is the um, this is the kale tunnel. Um, obviously, this this is this has gone in today. Um, still need to water it, but uh, they were watered last night before they went in. So we're, I know that they're not in need of water straight away, but they'll be watered later on. Um, this is the Nero kale that went in last week. So the kale tunnel is is uh, coming on strong. Um, the next tunnel um, is the one that we reinforced last week on the on the in fact on the last episode. Um, and this is the one with the, the sort of the, the new metal pipes along the top. And that's the purple sprouting broccoli. As you can see, that's very quickly established itself. And they're now all sort of standing up. Um, and this is the um, green broccoli or the, or the calabrese. Um, and obviously this is, this is doing really well now. And as I explained, you know, you need to make sure that, the, that they're kept water. Don't let them dry out as establishing themselves. Because brassicas are reasonably um, sort of shallow rooted. You don't want to water them too much, but just make sure they don't dry out, so the plant gets shocked. But uh, so that's the uh, second tunnel. So that's coming on. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right, here's the um, spinach. As you can see, it's all coming through. So I've got a nice, nice row of that coming on. These are the um, Swedes, which are doing really well. I'm very impressed with the Swedes this year. Um, so from now on, I'm most certainly going to be planting these in little modules. Um, those are the parsnips at the top there that we planted um, in the last episode. Um, episode one. Those are the ones that were grown in the propagator. Um, these are the ones that are these are the ones that have been grown from seed straight into the ground. So there's a parsnip there. As you can see, they're coming through. These ones here. There's a parsnip there. There. These are the ones that um, were chitted. So as you can see, the ones that were chitted are most certainly ahead of the ones that went in as seed. Um, but the ones that were in the propagator, um, on the end there, just quickly zoom in, those ones that were in the propagator are most certainly winning the, uh, the match at the moment, or the race, whatever you want to call it. Um, in here we've got the, um, the two types of um, beetroot, and as you can see there, the beetroot plants there. There's quite a few weeds coming through as well, but these are beetroot. You can tell beetroot because you, the easiest way to tell is if you look at the leaves, they're kind of not quite pointed, but the actual stem's red. That's the best way of identifying uh, beetroot. Unless you grow the white variety, then the stem is uh, 
obviously lighter but uh, and here's the is the beat roots here as well then if you can see that through the frame so they are coming um, what I need to do is get the hoe up either side of these rows now and uh, just just knock out the ones that are obviously not on the rows and then I'll um, sort of go up there on my hands and knees and just pick out the uh, pick them out and thin them out in the next few weeks when they get to the size when you can grab hold of them. Um, the, the rhubarb's done as proud again this year. One thing you need to watch out for, and I actually left this on so I could show you, is uh, beetroot will, about now, in the UK, at least will throw up these, um, these flower shoots. You see these here? As beautiful as they are, what you need to do is um, get right the way down into the plant and snap it off. So you don't want that because what that's going to do is um, it's going to be sapping energy out of the uh, sapping energy out of the actual main plant. So make sure you get all of the little flower heads off because what you don't want is for the rhubarb to be um, putting its energy into making seed. So uh, if you see any of them on your rhubarb, what, it, it comes up like a sort of closed hand sort of fist like that and then it'll open up into those flowers. As soon as you see the little fist coming through, um, pull it off as, as, as far down as you can get it because they'll be sapping all the energy out of your, uh, your rhubarb. So what I, what I do do is when I'm going around picking rhubarb, I always keep my eye open for them. If you see one, just pull it out. Um, the front bit here has been all, all um, hoed over and all the weeds taken out. Um, um, I've moved all of the um, calendulas to the front, as you, as you know I do. Um, this is going to form the um, the classic that, that you always see at the beginning of all the videos. Um, in here I've also got the pink ones and I'm going to be putting some yellow seed down as well later today or tomorrow. So there'll be, this year it'll be a mixture of orange which is the classic, um, classic colour for calendulas. Um, and also yellow and these ones like this one here, that one there, that one there. They're the, uh, the pink ones that um, I've tried for the first time this year. So all this has been hoed. Um, I've put some more beans in as well. So I've basically got down to here with the beans now. So I'll, I just need to put those few at the back there that are still in the greenhouse. But um, I've got probably two thirds of the beans in now. Um, so they're doing well. Um, this is the other side of the onions. Obviously these have all been weeded out. These ones here, the weeds aren't quite big enough to grasp hold of. I have pulled some of them out, but uh, I need to sort of pull a few more weeds out. Um, those seed onions I've put in, got two ones really quite pathetic. There's, there's, there's one here, there's one there, one there. Uh, but by far the majority of them have failed. I can see probably half a dozen along the row. So what I might do is just dig them out and um, put the leeks up there to be honest with you because uh, they just weren't much good and I've got plenty of onions anyway so I think I'll probably take them out and put the leeks in that position. Um, it's the other side of the potatoes. And uh, there was one thing I was going to mention. Um, I'm going to be painting all of this woodwork around the, um, the strawberries um, just to protect it and just, just sort of keep it uh, keep it um, you know, you know, stop it from sort of rotting and sort of decaying and stuff. But um, the one thing I wanted to say was, never put any kind of woodwork like this directly onto the ground because what it will do is it'll it'll never dry out and it just rots. So as you can see, this is sitting on um, bricks. So what I've got is a, is, is a an arrangement of bricks going all the way around the uh, round the um, strawberries, and that's basically holding down the. Um, this, this sort of black membrane. So, that, so they're sitting on top of the black membrane and then on top of the bricks I've got the uh, the wood sitting. So as you can see there are the bricks there and then the wood is kind of sitting. Now this wood isn't fastened down at all so that's just basically resting on top of the bricks and because I've got the bricks there there's no moisture coming into the, uh, the wood so the wood stays dry so the wood doesn't rot. But um, it is a good idea at this time of year Whilst you've got, um, you know, the strawberries aren't sort of all over it, and of course you haven't got the frames on top of it as well. It's just to give it a lick of um, paint, you know, some of, um, I'm just going to use some fence paint. So over the next week I'm just going to quickly paint that, um, you know, just to, you know, try and protect it a little bit. So this time of year, if you have got a dry period, um, and if you haven't got enough jobs to do with weeding and stuff like that, um, it's, a, it's a good time of the year to, you know, just to protect 
um, your sheds or your you know anything made out of wood in your in, in your allotments before the plants start to grow all over them and uh, you know then you you know you run the risk of damaging the plants whilst you're painted so it's a good time of year to paint if uh, if um, you know you, you know now whilst you can get to the wood it's um, it's worth doing so that's what the allotment looks like today so I hope this episode of Jim's Lot with Garden has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments, questions that you've got below on anything that we covered today or any, in any of the previous um, episodes. In the next episode, I'm going to be showing you how to prepare the greenhouse, how to um, sort of empty all the, um, the, uh, the borders out and how to prepare them, which is the old Victorian hotbed um, way of doing things. And I'll also be putting in the tomatoes and all of that, so I can show you that in all, you know, all in one episode next time. So I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Lot with Garden.